everybody. Welcome back to FACE. Everyone doing okay? Bernard, Anthony, Antonio, who else is in the house? Blake is back today from the edge of the universe. David Ogles, how are you? Hammett, Erna, Erna, you are always here. You're one of the first ones in the room. John Geiger, Stalin, Hitler, Kim Jong-un, all the dictators in the room. Good morning, Hamid and Jeff. Everyone doing okay? All right, let's get down to business. So uh, I had one of my best turnaround Tuesdays in a while. You know, I, I, you know I'd make another call on Wonderful Wednesday, but I don't think I could top it. Yeah, ping pong, and we have tennis, and we have volleyball. You're not the only game with a net in here. Hey, how are you, Stalin? I wish you were in power instead of Putin. Just kidding. You're about the same. Anyway, so yesterday Andre was on. Andre came in to fill in, and Steve uh, was talking about it. And when Andre was on, uh, he had uh, 78.6 back at 2808. And I said, I'm already sure it was short from 07 with a 10 handle risk. And I said, but Andre, my 78.6, it's 28.10, uh, 29.10. Uh, so, uh, you know, everyone has different fibs, but look at the form here. One, two, three, boom. Okay, anyone catch it? Because it was laid out for you for about an hour yesterday before it happened. So you had time to think about it. Well, everyone who caught it and is not a, a subscriber, that pays for your subscription for at least six months. Okay, so uh, I, I think there's more left. Okay, I, I'm not in the bear camp as far as, you know, we're gonna wash out under these lows here. Not yet but more looking for a correction of this wave. And then maybe we finally get the full, the final blow off to 3000. So that's, that's the way I'm thinking. Everyone with me, give me a why. Something else that was uh, discussed, I discussed early in the week. I said it was simply counter trend, which it, it is and continues to be was a, uh, Euro pound up here, in here on Monday. Okay, so it had one more rally, decent scalp, 50 pips so far. Not sure what to do with it now. As you can tell, Euro is acting weaker than cable, short term anyway. Here's Euro. Also, you know, you look at the Euro, it still hasn't done anything wrong. I know it hasn't accelerated, and birthday boy Steve Volge brought that up yesterday. I said, you know, aren't you concerned we're not accelerating out of this breakout? And he said, not necessarily. So all we did so far is come back and check it. It looks okay. So I think the guys at Forex Analytics are going to get their breakdown in the dollar. Okay, so... Even though the euro's underperforming cable right now, it still looks like a major breakout until we close back under 1280. And also earlier in the week, I was a little disappointed that the Mexico news came out because uh, I was planning on doing something down here in US dollar yen. I may still have a chance to do so in the coming days. So we'll see. And you know that all ties in with yields and yields actually made a new low. On the way there, gold looks good. I think we're going to get a third drive up here. That again, like the end. So like Steve said early in the week, I uh, said, darn, Steve, you know, I was waiting for a third drive. He said, well, it could pull back and still do it. And he was right. And uh, we all know silver's done okay since uh, breaking out of this, pointed to this falling wedge. Steve added on his charts for I don't know, about a decade. So still holding where it is. Uh, Gold-silver ratio, I keep thinking it's going to peak. I want to take a look at yields before I hand it over to Blake. 
So I don't know if we're going to be able to squeeze out another low. It's trying to put in a higher low and actually look at the 10 year yield got back to the throw over line and was rejected there. Back inside this wedge, I think you have to declare at least a short term bottoming in yields. Okay. Uh, there still is a possibility if the yen washes one more time that we could get a wash here and what could trigger it? Uh, what could trigger it would be, you know, maybe another 40, 50 handles down in the S&Ps. That ought to do it, you know, maybe back down to here, maybe only here. But anyway, I think you could key a, an S&P buy with a, a yen touch down at 107.60. And if the S&P call wasn't good enough for you to spend a little money and say thank you for putting on a free webinar for two and a half years, um, this should be. And before I bring uh, Blake on, I want to do something. All right, everyone knows Blake and Greg and Stell. And you see this guy right here? Oh, he's a college graduate. He was an individual man, managing his family funds. Boy, boy, are you. <laughs> I want to ask Steve about how it is for him when he was trading family funds during a drawdown. Wouldn't that be an interesting interview? Okay. He progressed, went private. Look at this. He's a lover of sciences. And Steve and I, Steve's a Gemini, okay? I mean, later in the cycle, he's happily married. Okay, oh, he's got cats. Should have a dog. Anyway, everyone join with me for my teammate. And one of the best analysts I've met in the business, and you know, guys, I've been in the business since 76. So what is that? 43 years. Happy birthday, buddy. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Nostra Volgi. Happy birthday to you, and may this be the best year ever and always. Happy birthday for Steve. Happy birthday, buddy. That was very nice, uh, Dale. I don't know if he's in actually today. He's not even in? I don't know, uh, <laughs> but uh, that was really good. Maybe you'll do one for me in August. <laughs> I, yeah, just remind me. Anyway, okay, so he's he's probably out celebrating that he turned fifty today. Huh? <laughs> I, I actually, probably celebrating that he's not doing analysis today. <laughs> Hi, Blake. How are you, buddy? I'm I'm good. tired. I'm tired. Yeah. I'm. Yeah. Uh, I saw I'm, the picture that that you you were walking so much. You you know, I think they your kids were pushing you around in a car towards the end. Uh, no. They? It, you know, if you guys have ever done Disney, um, and and Dale, I'm sure you've done Disney before. It's yeah. uh, it's a beatdown. I mean, it. You know, we 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 did. Uh, you know, the Magic Hour, and we we rocked the parks until midnight, till we closed them down. And you know, it, you know what? Uh, That's a great name for face. The Magic Hour. <laughs> <laughs> It, uh, yeah, it, it, it's, uh, it, it's, um, I, I don't, you know, I mean, here's the thing and, and it, I know it's, uh, you know, people, people take this for granted, but when you work from home, you don't really go anywhere. <laughs> and so, uh, you know, putting that much, like, you know, you, you go Howard, and you, you, like you, Howard you, Hughes, Blake, you know, uh, I, I got a new <laughs> pair of Kleenex boxes for shoes. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it really, it's, 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 uh, it, it's quite uh, taxing on your body when you don't normally go anywhere. And then all of a sudden, you, you know, you do this, uh, you know, you go walking for like, you know, we, we, 
my wife, uh, her, her, uh, her, her, you know, I watch Mark 30,000 steps, uh, on Sunday. So, I mean, that's, that's a lot of, that's a lot of walking. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it really is. I mean, and that that and that is actually taking a that's actually taking a break midday because what what we do is uh, and and if anybody's ever done Disney during the summer, you you know what this is like. You um, you know we go in at seven and uh, you know ride as many rides as possible till about one or two, and then we go back to the room for a couple hours and you know take a little bit of a nap and then get up again and you know and 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 do from you know five till five till seven or five till midnight you know at night and it's man it's a lot of walking i tell you my and my feet just aren't used to it you know and like i said you 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 work from home and uh and so yeah i'm i feel a little broken body wise all right buddy well uh, we had a little break in the s and p's yesterday i i I don't know if you're up to speed yet no i'm not okay all right so uh maybe uh you know, you could just. Uh, go oh on. no, I'll I'll I'll, I'll take over. I'm, I'm you know I'm I, I see that I haven't missed a whole lot, and that's the that's the thing yes. about the. Uh, let me see here. Let me yeah, go. you know when you're away and you come back, and you know it feels like there were things happening if you were here, but if you're away, you're right. Not much has changed. The euro's still hanging around. You know the wedge it broke and everything so yeah i mean everything's still and by the way the 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 euro um from what i understand that we're going to be contained by some some options this week we now we do have inflation data uh and and i'll be here to cover it live since uh it is steve's birthday he's not going to be here uh today so um you know and i and i am still playing i actually believe it or not i got i got oops i didn't mean to do that let me get back over to the euro here. Uh, I I got filled on a euro bid at one thirteen ten on um or actually eleven rather on Sunday night. So I got I got filled long pre market uh, when we you know uh, traded somewhere down here. You know was, I guess is here's here's where we opened and I but I but I actually got filled on this gap lower. And it was gapping lower. I got filled, and then you know we traded below it, and um, you know, and here here we are. You know, we're just kind of trading up towards. We're still like like you said, we're still managing a breakout here, and I'm not worried about it. And one of the reasons why the euro is under pressure today is is you're seeing a lot of uh, a lot of uh, selling pressure come through the euro pound, and the euro pound's under a little bit of pressure. The pounds back up at uh back up at this 127 you know uh 50 level and quite possibly could break out uh, even further so that might uh keep that pressure on the euro especially given that the there's a there's a bunch of options expiring today at 113.25 and then at the end of the week at 113 the figure so um that doesn't mean that the euro can't go higher it doesn't mean that the euro can't break out uh, to the upside, but because there's so many options expiring um, between here and 113, this might be a week of just consolidation in the euro, uh, regardless of all the regardless of all the um, you know the data that's coming out. I mean, it. it um, hold on, let me move this over here really quick. You guys can't see that, but I'm. I had to move the admin thing. Um, so we'll see if the euro can, you know, can sustain these levels. I, I think it will. Uh, I, you know, I, I believe that the dollar is, you know, in process of, you know, playing out this uh, this big double top. Um, you know, obviously we're holding this trend line here, but you know, break below the 200-day moving average and the trend line uh, should open up that downside move eventually to, you know, 97, uh, 95, 70, and that's where I ultimately think that we're going in the dollar index. Uh, but again, you know, the move, the move that we're seeing right now has been very muted and, and I'm, and, and I quite frankly, I'm, I'm surprised that we haven't seen any volatility. Uh, it used to be pretty common knowledge when I left town, um, that we'd get some massive, um, uh, volatility, but it, it hasn't happened as of late. So, uh, I, I think I might have passed on that, um, that baton to somebody else at, at some point, but, uh, but again, you know, I'm I'm looking at the euro a move above a move above the 200-day moving average here, which comes in now at 113, 
you know, 65 ish, uh, that should open up some, some upside. I believe that this descending wedge is still playing out, still playing out higher. It just, um, you know, we're consolidating and, you know, working off some overbought conditions. You could see the four hour RSI way to work off some overbought conditions here and eventually should, uh, uh, should reset and, and, and hopefully break out, you know, to the upside. And that, that's what I think is going to happen. Uh, but we have to get past like today's data. Today's inflation data is going to be pretty key. Uh, and, and by the way, let's uh, take a look here at the inflation data that we have coming out. Now, uh, as, as, I'm, as I'm going over this, and here's the CPI, we're expecting 0.2%. Uh, month over month, year over year, 2.1%. Uh, if anything comes in light today, uh, that that's that's you know could be the catalyst could, to drive us maybe up to 113.50. But like I said, I don't think that we're going to break out uh, based on all the options that are expiring. We'd have to have a pretty weak, benign inflation data number to to get us uh, really moving but um stelios you've been here for the last couple of days uh what uh, what what's uh, you know and i i saw the cable moving a little uh, higher a little earlier we're, we're we're not too far from the highs uh, apparently boris johnson was speaking a little bit earlier what's the latest on what's happening in the uk hello uh, hi blake welcome back Good morning. Um, thanks uh, well, we're now well and truly into the um, the part where all the um, candidates have started their, um, uh, how do you call it, their, um, their, their um, what's the word, their contention, basically, they're for the final 10 contenders. And, you know, Boris Johnson is by far the favorite. And he is also by far the most controversial one. And uh, he did Extremely say... Extremely polarizing. Yes. And he did say, while you were away, he did say that... Um, he would consider not paying the thirty-nine billion dollar or pound pound, I think, bill to the um, to the Europeans in the case of a, of, a, of a, when Brexit happens. So that um, that stirred a few feathers. And uh, Manuel Macron, um, yes, campaign is the word. Simon, thank you. That was a word I was looking for. Um, uh, Macron actually said that that will be a case of the UK defaulting, which is probably not the case. But anyway, there's a there's quite a few strong words being uh, spoken already. And we were discussing Boris Johnson a little bit uh, yesterday and the day before on this webinar. And, you know, I, I, in, in the beginning, I always thought, oh, my God, if Boris Johnson uh, wins, it's going to be bad for the pound. You know, he's unpredictable. You don't know what he's going to do. But then having looked at all the other uh, candidates. You look at uh, people like Michael Gove or Sajid Javid and, uh, you know, Andrew Leedsom and Domin Crab and all these people. They are in the, a very similar mold to Theresa May, if you can call it that. But, you know, they're not um, somebody totally different in terms of character and um, temperament. And, you know, the more I think about it, the more um, in terms of the Europeans, if they're ever going to make a concession... I think it's going to be um, against somebody like Boris Johnson because he's volatile, he's unpredictable, and uh, he might actually scare them a little bit. Um, I mean, who knows what's going to happen, but the bottom line is Boris Johnson is the favorite, and um, he's already saying quite a few things, and of course we have to see who actually wins the um, the succession uh, after um, Theresa May. But um, yeah, he's, um, you know, the market, I don't know that what the market, the market doesn't know what to do with this guy. I, I think, you know, is he positive? Is it negative for the pound? There are arguments on both sides. So it's, um, it's well, we haven't seen the cable break down. Yes. But on the other hand, we've seen the dollar being a little bit weak in the last few days. So True. I think the cable is probably in line with uh, the dollar weakness. Um but, you know, um, seeing Boris Johnson as the overwhelming favorite, theoretically, if you had asked me two months ago, I would have said, oh, my God, the pound would have collapsed. And it hasn't. So I guess everybody's just waiting to see what's, uh, how he's going to handle it if indeed he wins. Well, I think, well, technically, so, you know, taking a look at the cable technically, um, what, you know, the, 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 this is obviously pretty key resistance. And, uh, I mean, we're only... 25 pips away let's let's you know keep that in perspective that you know a move above 127.75 would frankly be pretty bullish uh the cable i think technically um and 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 obviously a move above 128 would be you know that would kind of seal the deal but uh, you know if i was short the cable 
I would be a little concerned. Um, and, and, you know, is that a product of dollar weakness or is that a product of pound strength? You know, it's hard. It's, you know, as you pointed out, it's, it's kind of hard to put your finger on it because you don't know if, if it is more dollar weakness or, or, or count or pound strength at the time. But then, then the flip side of that is if you look at the Euro pound and the Euro pound looks like it, it, it will, you know, weaken from here, I would think. And this, th these are drawings from last week, by the way, they're not, you know, um, it's not anything current. We had this like little butterfly pattern that actually completed, um, you know, roughly, you know, 127% extension, something like that. Um, we had this little butterfly that's kind of completed. I, 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 I would think that, you know, the cable is probably, you know, at risk of, of a continued, um, you know, strengthening. And, in and, you know, if the Euro pound breaks down, that's just going to be further catalyst to, to, uh, to, to get the pound uh, really, you know, moving higher. And remember the market is predominantly pretty short the pound. And so that's, I think between positioning maybe a lot of people have the same opinion as you um, uh, Stelios where it's like, Oh, you know, maybe, maybe the, maybe Boris, a uh, Boris Johnson prime minister might be more uh, of a, a pound positive. And if anybody is short the cable, they're like, Oh my God, I can't believe we're not breaking down yet. Maybe I'm going to be forced to cover. And so I think those are the risks that are associated, uh, associated around the, the cable right now. And, and I, I, frankly, I don't think I'd want to be short the pound. You know, at this at this moment, it looks uh, pretty firm, uh, and it looks like it you know might might actually continue here. Now, one of the other things that I want to I want to point out, or I'd like to talk a little bit about today, is the uh, is the dollar yen because the dollar yen has stayed you know relatively weak. Um, you know, we we got we got the typical uh, turnaround Tuesday yesterday, didn't we, Dale? as far as equities go. I don't know if Dale's here. Um, but if you see, if you see yeah, the- Blake. Uh, Yeah, Blake, yeah. Yeah, we it got the typical classic. turnaround classic, right? It was, you yeah. know, up Monday, uh, sold off a little bit. Um, you know, you know, it, we're starting to weaken again in the S&P. So, you know, the, the, uh, the dollar yen, um, yeah. you know, still looks pretty vulnerable here. So, and, and you, could, you could probably argue that this is a flag pattern. I think you could, yeah. Tempers my uh, plan to uh, buy it down there at one hundred six seventy or so, but we'll see how it sets up. One there. Is one hundred six seventy what you were looking at? Yeah, uh, it's a sixty one eight percent retrace, and I had a line where it comes in there, but that measures much deeper. Yeah, if I mean, it's a flag. If it is a flag, and yeah. and so I think you gotta you know be a little careful, especially you know looking at the inflation data today. If the inflation data comes in weak, um, you know we we might we might take out the one hundred eight level. And if we take out the one hundred eight level, then, then you, yeah, you start thinking about you know the measured move of a flag uh, could look something like. Yeah. And I mean, it takes us down to one hundred six fifty, not too far away from what what you were what you were thinking of the um, one hundred six seventy area. Yeah. Okay. Of Thank the you. Six one eight. Yeah, sure thing. But I mean, you know, again, I I, I think with S and P's a little weaker, and uh, with you know stocks are actually a little vulnerable here, that the uh, the dollar yen might come under a little bit of pressure. Now, I wanted to ask because both you and Stelios would know this. What's happening in Hong Kong? Why are there protests in Hong Kong right now? Because that I wasn't. Aware yeah, of. it's a currency thing, Stell, isn't it? No, the the thing is, there's some new legislation apparently, uh, which is being brought in, which will allow extradition to to China. Oh. And um, and people are really there. I mean, there's apparently a million people on the streets uh, yesterday, and um, so that's pretty big. I mean, it's, 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 it is a, definitely uh, something to keep an eye on and something that the Chinese are going to be looking at. Yeah, and, you know, Hong Kong is a, you know, is, is a very interesting um, experiment. It is. I, you know, I, and, I, and I've spent a lot of time in Hong Kong. I've probably really? spent, 
yeah, was pro- we we had an office there. Um, wow. well, Wise Trade had an office there for years, and so I would go there and spend two, three weeks at a time. I've I've spent a couple months in 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 Hong Kong, and uh, it's a really I would experiment is a good way to 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 uh, to explain what Hong Kong is for China, and um, you know I think it's it's a pretty decent barometer that could you know show china what social unrest may look like and plus it's such a populated little area um it's i can only imagine if if there's an uproar there um how How many people there if there were a million on the street what was that like a tenth of the population or something oh i don't know i i would i I would say it you know without you know looking at you know wikipediaing it right now um it's you know Probably I did. I just did. It's price. seven seven point four million people. So wow. that's a very good, good chunk of them, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, that's that's a it's a lot of it's a lot of people. It's like it's like Manhattan in a in a sense, you know. Um, I, I, Manhattan probably has you know double that double the amount of people of that of Hong Kong, but the the landmass is very small, um, so it's very concentrated. Uh, so yeah. Yeah. I, wow. I, it, Sardineville, man. It is. It re- it really is. It's uh. It's it's kind of crazy. But anyway, um. So yeah, I was wondering what was happening in Hong Kong. Again, I've I've been you know I've been traveling. I've been uh. I was in I was in Disney, uh. Disneyland, um. <laughs> Disney, Disney. Disneyville for the last. You have a Disney years. hangover, bro. I I do. I'm my <laughs> my feet actually hurt, and I'm sitting down, and they hurt, which is which wow. is crazy. Doctor Schultz. Time. Actually, Blake Blake actually, our friend Simon just said, and thank you, Simon. He said that the, the um. This goes against the agreement that the UK made with China when uh, the Hong Kong was handed over. Okay. So that's why it's it's pretty big. Thank you, Simon. Okay. So thanks, Simon. Um, let's uh, let's take a look at we're gonna we're gonna take a look at the uh, dollar yen. We're 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 just a couple minutes outside of um, outside of the uh, let me launch data flash here. Move this over. Excuse me, really quick. Um, we have inflation data coming here in just a couple of minutes. So, uh, uh, Stelios, what's your read here on inflation? What are you thinking? Well, inflation has been disappointing uh, pretty much everywhere. Uh, and uh, core PCE, if you remember last uh, week, was it, I think, uh, came in point one wor- worse than expected. So my guess is if I had to make a bet on this, I'd say it comes in like point one weaker or something like that. So it's expected, core CPI is expected to go from point one to point two month on month. I'd say it's some change at point one or something like that. So it'd be a little bit of it rattled the cage if month over month we came in at, uh, at like a flat number. Yeah, well, I think point one here and there is not going to make a huge difference, but um, but yeah, I think uh, for choice, I think it's going to be probably lower than expected. And that's that's you know one of the big hangups that the that that the market has regarding the Fed is you know this in this weaker if we have weaker inflation data. You know, is 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 the market really going to see the Fed um, lower rates, maybe even quite aggressively uh, in the in the coming months? And that's that's the risk that you have to the dollar. You know, long story at the moment is that the Fed is going to have to actually be a little weaker moving forward. So uh, let's watch. You know, watch the dollar yen here. Where we're let's see about probably about a minute and a half. Yeah, minute and a half out. So, you know, Blake, you know, the interesting thing, sorry to interrupt, the interesting no, no. thing is that um, Fed fund futures are pricing four cuts within the next year and a half, and then the curve goes positive again. So the market thinks it's going to be a quick, um, relatively aggressive cutting, and then we we'll go back to the usual hockey stick uh, rates higher um, trajectory. So it's just quite interesting. Yeah, you know, I wonder what they, they must uh, they must feel then that this uh, this uh, you know inflation is uh, or lack thereof is is a bit transitory. Yeah, could be, or it could be the what we were saying as well is that they will either need to cut a lot quickly or very little. So that that goes in line as well, right? You you go now you're going to have a, an upward sloping curve afterwards, no matter which one of the two. Um, trajectories you get because if they don't cut it means that things have actually stabilized and inflation is going higher um, and if they do cut a lot then the curve has to go higher
higher afterwards, right? It's kind of like almost a done deal. Okay, so we'll have five seconds. Uh, let's see. This is Bloomberg right here. This is data flash. You'll see how. Boom. Yeah, it's almost there. There you go, Point 0.1. Wow. <laughs> Weaker. So let's, let's see what the market makes of it. I think that's the first time in my life I'm right in a prediction. <laughs> <laughs> so hold on, I got I only sold a portion of my uh, of my uh, cable here. I had a little bit of uh, cable, so I got to sell. Uh, what is that? God, that's, 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 okay. there goes again. While you're doing that, I might um, take this chance just to talk about one other thing. Go ahead. Um, so we talked about UK and uh, really the, on the only other major thing that's been happening is again, Donald Trump talking about the China deal. And he did um, uh, say a few things yesterday. Uh, he, he said that, he, that the, chi the Chinese want to make a deal very badly. Those were his words. Ugh. And that he was, uh, he was the one holding up the deal. And yeah. it's either, either we do a great deal or we're not going to do a deal at all, which is, uh, you know, the same... Um, same kind of speak that he's been um, uh, using recently. And the interesting thing is that he said that he, that the U.S. are looking for the Chinese to do certain things, uh, such as curbs on subsidies, on subsidies for um, Chinese state-owned enterprises. So they want basically the Chinese to, to change the way they're, they're doing their internal affairs, let's say, in certain Yeah, good things. luck on that one. Well, yeah, that's a, it's a tough one, but uh, you know, Donald Trump seems very um, focused on this, and he seems very um, um, how shall we, he's digging his heel in. So, you know, it could work, it could not work. I, I'm not the guy to say if it's right or wrong, but he's definitely sticking with what he's um, right. he's been saying for the past few. I weeks. have one word to say: kowtow. It won't happen. <laughs> yeah, they won't do it. Could be. Uh, I don't Why know. Why should they? Saying. They don't even know why, uh, if he's going to be in office in 18 months. Why should they make a long-term deal with this guy? You yeah. know, that's, that's, a, that's, a, that's a great point. I mean, a, a, lot of, a, lot of, uh, a lot of analysts are thinking that China's just going to hunker down and just, you know, wait it out, wait them yeah. out. Their population's know? used to being poor. Let's see how the yuppies in their later years deal with some adversity. <laughs> and, and remember there was um, there was one of the Chinese officials who actually did say on record he said that if it comes to an, a stalemate and a really protracted end game we can, we can wait it out he said that he said our government will make sure we emerge the winners so you know in that respect they're probably right yeah they're, they're happy a lot of the population to have a bowl of rice at night so, I mean all of China has not uh, been urbanized Okay, so then you know yeah. there are ghost cities. Yeah. Anyway, well, I I think it's a mess, and I think uh, uh, our president is throwing gasoline on a fire that uh, uh, he seems to enjoy. So get out your marshmallows. And watch, you know, I just I just want to say real quick, uh, watch this cable. It you know it's been firm all night uh, or all you know all day basically. Um, yeah, I think we are at a risk of. A break hard. I don't think the euro is going anywhere, and and uh, I just sold off some of my euro that I bought, you know, over the course of the last, you know, I I actually picked it up on Sunday. I just sold some of it, just because, like I said, I don't think the euro is going to, you know, make much, you know, get get much higher than where we're currently at. We might we might trade up into the fifties, but you know, I, I with all these options expiring over the next couple of days, I'd just rather be buying on dips and you know, you know, taking. 20, 30 pips out when I can, but the cable is at risk of actually, you know, I think breaking a little higher and, and therefore, uh, as I was mentioning a little earlier, I think the risk of a, a move lower in the Euro pound is, is, is quite realistic. Um, let me do a little bit better work here. Like technically, let me delete this. Let me delete that. And, uh, let's tighten these, uh, tighten these trend lines up a little bit. Let me, let me make sure I've got, let's make this is correct. Yeah, there's your upper trend line. Let me get rid of this one. 
Let's uh, make it a little thicker so we can kind of visually see it. Okay, so lower trend line over here. It comes in pretty much at the spike low today, which comes in around uh, 88.70, you know, roughly 88.72-ish. Uh, yeah, there's 88.71. So watch that. If that support breaks, um, then I think the, the, the cable might have a shot at breaking above this 127.70. Uh, so that, that's kind of what I'm looking at today. Like I said, I don't think the euro is going anywhere. Don't think the euro is going to, you know, be breaking higher, despite the weak inflation data. I, I just don't think that we're going to make it much higher than where we're at. But it's the it's the pound that we should be watching kind of carefully at this at this uh, at this point in time. Um, you know, looking at that dollar yen, dollar yen is is a little weaker, but we have to, you know, we have to break below 108.15 um, ish to get you know any downside movement. I'm I'm surprised that the market's been so well contained. We are really seeing um, no volatility in the FX market, which is surprising, you know, going into the end of last week and seeing that dollar week move. Um, I would have thought that we would have seen a lot more volatility come through the markets, but we're not, we're not seeing, you know, the, the, the Aussie dollars, you know, I mean, look at this, these tight ranges, holy cow. And, and the, you know, this is me coming back, uh, and making observations after being gone a few days. So, you know, just, uh, you know, this, this lack of volatility is, is in my opinion, quite surprising. Um, yeah. Whenever you go away, the things blow up usually. Usually, usually <laughs> do. And the ugly candle on the U S dollar yen, uh, one hour chart now, Blake, looks like it's headed down there. Yeah. Yeah. It may not I mean, be that, a bad that, short here still. It, it could be, but uh, you know, or do, do you want to take a do you want to take a chance that this is the moment that you're gonna that you're gonna see this explosion in volatility? You know, that's the that's the that's the risk, right? As you as you as you go, okay, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna take a I'm gonna take a whoops I'm gonna take a shot on the market right now, and then then what happens? You know, you get a you know just a kind of a flat line move. Um, but like I said, I think the cable is the one you got to watch because if this this really starts breaking, you know, into the 70s and 80s, then you're going to start to see like a little cascading movement in in the pound pairs. And that's and a so, good uh, that's a good point, Blake, because the DSI is showing more bearishness in cable than euro currently. So that means there's more shorts to squeeze. Market, yeah, I mean the markets, the the sentiment's been so sour on the cable for so long, and that's why I, you know I. You know, it, 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 you know, it, it might be the euro pound that's the trade, um, pound Aussie, pound New Zealand. These these currencies have been beat down, and I know our traders specifically in in our in our in our room love to trade some of these uh, some of these exotics. The you know the the pound crosses show their room, so oh, people yeah. know that what they're missing. Oh yeah, you guys, you guys, if you guys haven't seen all of us in the chat room, here we go. That's, and by the way, you know this is how this is how uh, slow it is uh, for me. As I actually, uh, put, you want to see all the uh, uh, here? Oh, we got all the charts that we talk about, and then all my pictures from Disney. <laughs> Not all of them, but you know, a few pictures from Disney. <laughs> There's a few pictures from Disney there, but you can see Amanda. She posts a lot of charts in here, um, and you know, speaking of which. She's she's looking at the the inverted head and shoulder pattern of the cable. So you know, same type of thing. One twenty seven seventy, and that's a big breakout. You know that that we might see there. And uh, there's everybody in the chat room. Um, <laughs> Martin, whatever. Um, but uh, but anyway, there is the and and but and just uh, continuing on with with us in the chat room. There's about a hundred of us in there. And usually at all times, it's about how many people are, are chatting around. So I'm going to take you guys off Jumbotron. Um, hold up really quick. Just making some adjustments back on my screen here. So uh, let's take a look at that cable. So Amanda was looking at an inverted head and shoulder pattern. I'm not quite seeing it like she is, but actually... That's because that was 
that was covering it up. So what she's seeing here is this. There would be the shoulder. There's your head. There's your right, your right shoulder. Very symmetrical here. Neckline coming in right through here. I mean, this could be a big break. And, and again, it, you don't have to trade the cable. You know, you don't have to say, well, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to buy, I'm going to buy, you know, the pound. You could be trading, you know, use this chart specifically to cue off of, you know, oh, here's the pound yen, you know, that's, the, and by the way, I, I had a, um, a pattern in play on the pound yen last week uh, for a long that we, when we came out of that descending wedge, it just really didn't play through, but that doesn't mean it won't play through now. Um you know, this, this one in particular, you know, especially if, if, if stocks start to bounce, I mean, we could, we could see a, you know, continued, you know, rally back above 141 in the pound yen. Um, like I said, these, these cable crosses or pound crosses like the pound Aussie, you actually have this possible double bottom, slightly higher low, which, you know, and if, if you've got, you know, matched highs here, match lows, I mean, you're, you're talking a range and a range here in the, uh, in the pound Aussie, if we're trading between 189 and 181, you know, that's a 800 pip trading range and you got plenty of upside to make it back up towards, you know, 188, 189. So, you know, there's the pound Aussie, pound New Zealand, very similar type of situation. We've seen a bounce off of the 88% uh, retracement. Um, here's the underside of this, you know, I, this is very, um, this actually isn't drawn too well. And it's not, it's, I, I, I say that not because of, uh, you know, my drawings, it just hasn't been, you know, technically hasn't traded as, as clean as some of the other pairs, but that doesn't mean we can't get a rally back towards 196, 197 you know, and test the underside of this, this trend line here. So again, you don't have to trade the pound dollar per se, if you want to just remove the dollar out of the equation, but you have, you know, some of these pound crosses that might, you know, look a little bit more attractive to, to, to trade. Um, one of the other things you, and, and Dale, you mentioned this a little bit earlier, uh, and, and, and we're going to, we're going to have to take a look at it again today is look at the bond market. I mean, uh, what you, you've had a lot of, you've had a lot of, um, um, guests come in over the course of the last, you know, since I've had a chance to chat with you about it over the last couple of weeks regarding the bond market and this move that we've seen in bonds, what are some of your, um, your, your guests that have been in here? Uh, on the face webinar as, 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 uh, as interviews, what have they said about the bond market move, Dale? You know, I, I I've noticed, uh, besides Jamie Satley, when we were at 124 or in the TLT and he was very constructive, a lot of people, um, really not paying that much attention to it. Um, I, you know, personally, I, I'm looking for, you know, if the yen's going to where you're talking about, Blake, I think, uh, there's a potential for one more high, but uh, as you can see, uh, if we get one more high, there's going to be a, a lot of negative divergence. It's already building on longer time frames, uh, short time frames, but not longer time frames. Uh, so I'm I'm looking at the yen and the bond market being really closely correlated the last several months. So um, I'm keying off. Uh, 133 or so in TLT because I don't trade bond futures. I trade an ETF for that. And uh, keen off the yen at see if it can hold uh, 107.60 ish. And uh, I think there's a short coming here. Uh, I will say that uh, Jim Welsh is also looking for the same thing in June. And he also had that target above 133. And I really respect Jim's work because, you know, he started off. Uh, really being a Fed watcher. Okay. So wait, wait, wait a second, really quick. So Jim's looking for a move in the in the ten, ten year up to one thirty three. Uh, TLT. Oh, and TLT. Let's see. Okay, so uh, he's already a toe in the water on uh, shorts because he thought with this pullback that we had, this little pullback would be a four. Uh, but he's actually looking for yields, 
Yeah, he thinks that yields are so mispriced and not necessarily because of the Fed. I forgot his reasoning, you know, makes my head explode. But uh, he actually thinks that uh, the bonds with the chart you have up there um, are going to retest last year's lows when everyone was freaking out about, what was it, a 320 yield on the 10-year. So uh, uh, there could be a major bond short setting up here. And I think that would tie in with a weaker dollar, don't you? Uh, why, you know, what's a bond? It's like Steve says, it's a promise. And if, uh, you know, you're right, the team's right about uh, an important breakdown about to occur in the dollar, I don't think that's constructive for dollar-denominated assets. So, um, so you think you, you think that then then you're thinking a rise in yield is not going to have any any in, uh, impact in the in the dollar. Do well, it. the dollar was acting pretty good with uh, yields dropping for a year now. Yeah, you know one of the things, and if if you uh, you could go back a couple of years and 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 uh, you know and and listen to some of the comments that I made regarding. Um, U.S. assets in general. One of the things that would scare me as an investor uh, in 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 you, especially the equity markets is if you see a full fledged selling of U.S. assets. You know that that you know is tied in with the dollar, mm -hmm. the bond market, right. and if I if I own stocks and I saw the dollar come under pressure and I saw bonds come under pressure, and regardless, I'd be a little nervous to that's what i think is going to happen so so do you think it'd be more of a loss in confidence then yeah my loss in confidence um uh you know maybe even loss of confidence in the fed you know maybe they'll change their tune again you know i it seems like they're uh kind of being a, a marionette to the s p so, you know, we'll see. The market's already pricing in a couple of easings. Yeah. And if that doesn't happen, uh, the market's way mispriced for where it is up here. And although I'm looking for a new high in S&P's mid-July, some cycle guys I follow and stuff, this is we're going to have this pullback, one more shot up, and that might be it. And I think bonds, just like bonds and stocks have gone up together, they can go down together. Yeah. Okay, well, that's going to be uh, that 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 could be pretty that could be a pretty interesting dynamic. Now, you know, looking at the bond market, though, what I would be most concerned with if I was short the bond market, which you know, as you, you mentioned, like Jim's Jim Jim Welsh is uh, you know yeah. currently in that in that in that camp, is I would be you know really concerned that we've got a you know nice nice uh, you know flag developing here. This is just it looks like a consolidation continuation. Uh, move higher. Yeah, he didn't think the final high was in, but you know, it's a yeah. you know, you and I, and most of the people here listening to us, uh, we mainly trade leveraged stuff. But when he's uh, making these re recommendations on ETF, they're they're more forgiving. I'm not saying you won't go through a drawdown, but you're not going to you know, uh, blow up your account by being early. Yeah, you know what right. I mean. Yeah, good point. Yeah. Um, hey guys, just uh, just a little little heads up. If, I don't know if you guys are watching the euro here. This just the, look at the reversal. I mean, we were trading up into the one thirteen forties. We're getting slammed right back down again. I mean, this euro has got nowhere to go, and I and I think that that it has to do, you know, with all these options expiring. Matter of fact, I'm going to pick up my euro right again. I just picked it up right here at one thirteen sixteen, just a second ago. I just bought it right back down here. I'll trade this range for now. I still think that the dollar is breaking down eventually. Twelve eighty um, is my line in the sand for euro. Yeah, you know, I don't mind if we if we drop back, you know, towards one thirteen. Um, yeah, you know, I I don't at all. Um, I I don't know if we're gonna make it all the way back down there, but we'll see. Um, uh, but I just I just picked it up down there on that dip, and you know, I'll, I'll continue to buy it. You know, as we as we are down around these levels here, okay. you know, 113.10, you know. So, All right, well, like we said, do the have got nowhere to go right now. What's we do that? have an interview today, bro. Um, so Who's I'm, coming in? Um, at Westpac Glenn, and he's got some macro stuff. I uh, found him on Twitter, and 
actually, I think he was a request of some people that I interview him. If people are interested in having me interview someone that they find interesting and compelling, you know, you could always just message me on Twitter and I'll, I'll extend an invitation. So we've gotten lots of guests that way. So the community uh, is kind of like, uh, I don't know, a, they in, gather intelligence by going out and rec recommending people that we could bring into face. It's pretty yeah, cool. And, well, and that's a, one of the best things about being in a community. Like for today, I'm going to, I'm going to be leveraging all the trade ideas from, from our chat room because, you know, being you're, out of you're it, coming in cold. I'm, I am, I'm coming in cold. I'm not really, I'm not, uh, totally up to date and up to speed on all the moves that we've seen in the markets over the last couple of days. So, you know, these guys are all queuing off of a lot of the, the cross rates. So I'll probably be, you know, looking, uh, towards the, uh, you know, towards our community to, uh, to find some decent ideas out there, you know, other than just playing, you know, the dollar, you know, dollar on the short side, like I'm, you know, just buying a little dip here in the Euro, but, uh, to, to see some of those, uh, the crosses, you know, I find a lot of my trading opportunities right from the uh, right from our, our community, and that's that's the, you know one of the best things about being in the in the community in general is just uh, being able to do that. Um, now, real quick, let me let me just take a a quick look at the dollar index and take a look at the S and P bef before you bring in your guest. And oh, I actually want to look at not only the S and P, I want to look at some of the other markets as well. Um, some of the other equity markets. Uh, so here's the dollar index. The dollar index, you know, we we sold off following the number and here we are bouncing back um pretty aggressive bounce in the dollar index surprisingly um and you know let's go over to the daily and i and i know i mentioned this a little bit earlier this is that trend line the 200 day moving average it's all very um very key and here's your double top and it, the do, double top still plays to the uh, to the ninety five seventy level, which I eventually think that we're going. Doesn't mean we're going to go necessarily right now or or today, but uh, but I think that's eventually where we're going. So you know, I'm I'm willing to sell rallies in the in the dollar index. Any rally back up towards ninety seven, it's you know that's that's for me is uh, is you know I, I look at it more as a gift from the FX market if if the dollar you know ends up moving back up towards 97 I'll just I'll just look to sell. Um, but there's the dollar index. Let's take a look at the S&P. Uh, the S&P now Dale you'd mentioned a couple of your guests think that we're going to hit an, a new high in the yeah. S&P. Um, I you know I'm still in the camp of the this big double top, you know, trying to form. Um, I I'd like to I don't I Rather than assuming we're going to hit new highs, I, I'm more of the, you know, the camp that I'd have to see it to believe it type of thing. Right. Um, but we've had a nice move off of these lows. Let me right. see if I can do any work here. So maybe what we're going to do is correct this recent pop that we've had, Blake. That's what uh, they're, they're thinking. Uh, and I think even Andre had target. Yeah, correct. Back And then, yeah, right. One way or the other. But, and that would, yeah, that, and a lot of people looking for 30, like Henrik, I don't know, 30, 25, and I've seen that number before. And a guess I had on who's a real big cycle guy is looking for the most significant turn of the year in mid July. So that mid -July. would be enough time. Yeah, so that'd be enough time for it to work off some of this and then grind to a new high. And isn't that the Fed meeting in July? Um, Stelios might have a better answer. Than uh, he's that. gone. I, yeah. Oh, he's, oh, he's gone. He leave already. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah it, it, you know, it, he's a, you know, part-time ballerina. So he's very disciplined. <laughs> <laughs> he put his tutu on and jumped in the car. So anyway. So our, our next meeting is going to be mid July. Okay. Be July, but it's actually at the end of July. So, and, and okay. Yeah. All so, right. you know, we have a meeting next week and then the end of July, maybe that, that'll be the catalyst that, yeah. that, 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 that drives us. Um, the yeah, so we'll, we'll see, we'll see what S and P's do here. I, I wouldn't, I would not be chasing them on the long side here. No, not me. No. Um, not after this move that we saw the last couple of days. And actually I know Steve had a, had a really nice long Cover down there. Yeah. yeah I did. And, and he, he was, he was long, you know, I think on the, just around the 200 day moving average and played that beautifully. 
um, back to the upside. So, but let's take a look at some of the other markets too. Let's go over to the NASDAQ. NASDAQ has uh, actually been pre performing quite well. The Dow, um, you know, the Dow is actually, this is one of those markets that actually has been trading quite heavy and. Yeah, no new highs. Like no new highs, not like the S&P, not like the NASDAQ. Um, so I think if we're going to see any, you know, relative weakness, relative weakness, it'd probably be here first, you know, in, in, the, in the Dow. Uh, let's take a look at the Nikkei. <clears throat> I haven't looked at the Ugly. Nikkei in quite some time. Yeah, this is really underperforming. Matter of fact. See, well, so what a lot of people are saying is that the Nikkei can take out the low from December, January, while the S and P's put in a higher low. What I'd be, what I'd be really watching carefully, especially if you're trading the yen, is you know, you know obviously you're going to be watching the Nikkei, but the Nikkei below this uh, this twenty thousand level would be pretty, I think, a pretty bearish event uh, for the Nikkei, and would be you know quite bullish for the uh, for the yen if if we should we should do that. Now, um, one of the other markets that's been really weak is crude oil. Well, crude oil has been surprisingly yeah. weak. Um, what do you make of that, Dale? Uh, you know, it's hard to get short down here, but a lot of the bears are looking for uh, January lows to be taken out in this as well. But yeah, I, after, you can't, I mean, after a, tw uh, you know, what was $16 break in a few weeks, uh, hard to short it down here. But 57 58 on any rallies uh, would be, uh, I think a decent short, you know. Oh, I think that would be the gift, right? If you could get a rally back up to 57. Or wait um, for the S&Ps if they can generate a new high in July. Look at where crude is. And my bet is uh, even if S&Ps do make new highs, the crude will make a lower high off this break. And uh, that you short the weak sister. So that's what I'm thinking. Got it. Yeah, I, I, could, I could see that. Um, so real quick, just a just a just a uh, just a bit of an update here. The euro again, we we are really contained. I, I don't think we're going to see much below one thirteen, and we're not going to see much above one thirteen fifty. Might even be through the the remainder of the week. So uh, I, again, I'm a buyer on dips uh, in the euro. Uh, like I said, I picked up a little bit more down here at one thirteen sixteen. I sold it uh, earlier this morning up in you know near forty. I don't mind buying dips like that and just kind of trading this this range. Uh, we got to keep an eye on the cable. I think the cable above this uh, 127.70 is going to be very bullish for the pound. I don't know if the break is coming necessarily today, but if it does, if the pound does break above, you know, the 70s, then you got to look at the euro pound as a short, pound Aussie, pound New Zealand as possible longs, pound yen, you know, especially if equities, you know, bounce. I think that that might be a play. Um, and looking ahead, really quick, do we? We I think we have Australian employment tonight, right? Yes, we do. We have Aussie employment tonight, which will be that's going to be a mover. And and so that you have to think about that if you're trading like the pound Aussie. But take a look at the 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 uh, the Aussie dollar big failure at seventy. So in order to get the Aussie really bullish, we'd have to get back above 70 cents and a move above 70 cents would, in my opinion, would be very bullish for the Aussie. One of the things that I, I have to point out here is despite the ongoing, um, Aus, you know, China, U.S. trade war, the Aussie actually has been holding up quite well. And, you know, the Aussie has been extremely weak for this last, you know, roughly, you know, year and a half or, or whatever. Um, you know, ahead of the, the, of the, you know, probably with a good understanding that, that the China U S trade, um, war was going to continue and wreak havoc on the, the, uh, the, the, you know, pan Pacific area, but you're starting to see the Aussie diverge away from that. And, and if there's any, if there's, if there's anything that maybe is, is suggesting that, you know, we might be past the, the, uh, the, the worst of the US China trade war and things might start to get better towards the uh, end of this year. You know, again, you know, thinking ahead, thinking that we do have, um, we're heading into uh, an, an, the election cycle here in the US. Um, 
Donald Trump may want to try to make things a little bit better with China sooner rather than later. You know, like I said, the Aussie is already outperforming um, and, it, and it has been for the last few weeks. So uh, just watch the Aussie. If, if we break back above 70, I think that'd be a pretty bullish event for the Aussie. I don't think today is going to do it with, uh, with data, but you know, it, it, it is, it is possible. So with that being said, Dale, I'm going to pass it back over to you. I hope you have a great interview uh, with your, with your brand new guest. And, um, and I want to thank everybody for being here with us today. Make sure you visit our sponsor. Our webinar sponsor is Forest Park FX. Uh, you can, you can get to them right here on the Forex analytics site. Remember they are here to help you find uh, a broker that's best suited for your needs. Uh, you can get to them right from the Skype address or this email right here goes directly to Forest Park FX. Uh, you can be part of the Forex Analytics community, you you know, and and be in, be in our reimbursement program. So potentially your 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 trading commissions can help sus, subsidize your uh, your subscription with Forex Analytics. Or if you're in the U.S. and you want a cash back rebate, you can do that as well with uh, Forest Park FX. So. <clears throat> Welcome back, Blake. Thanks, man. And um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, let's see. You don't even have to pass me the screen. I'll just make him the panel. Okay. Sounds good. Okay, right. buddy. Good hunting. And, uh, you know, now you know how Fred Flintstone felt having to use his feet to brake and run his car. <laughs> <laughs> All, All right, right guys. Buddy. Thanks. All right. Okay, guys, that's a wrap.